Okay, hi, little grade 10s. Um, welcome to our physics unit. And in grade 10 science, we get to cover optics. So we're looking at light, forms of light, and then what happens when light hits a mirror, whether it's a flat mirror, we call that a plane mirror, or if it's a curved mirror, it could be a concave mirror or a convex mirror. And then what happens when light goes through um, a lens. So again, whether that lens is a concave or a convex lens. So for today's lesson, I'm going to go through three different little parts. The first part will be learning block number one, and then learning block two and three will be looking at um, starting to get ready to do our diagrams and figure out how to do some of this physics. Okay, so to start with, we just get to look at light and what light is, the fact that it travels in straight lines, and if you have a chance to watch the Bill Nye video, it gives you a great overview as to all of the things that we actually cover in this unit so it's kind of a funny 20 minute prelude but at the same time it's a summary of every kind of concept that we cover okay so feel free to have a look through that and fill in the note as best you can and if you don't have a printer that's okay just make your own notes as you've been normally doing so you've done a good job with that so definitely keep that up Okay, now you're going to be using the textbook to answer some of the questions, which is what is light, and uh, I'm going to highlight a couple of things on this note here, so feel free to pause the video if you need to fill in, and then also have your textbook open so you can make reference to some of the diagrams. I'll do the same thing in this video. Okay, so we recognize that light travels at very high speeds. How fast? Well, there are always, there's always this saying that in the time that you uh, snap your finger, Light can travel around the Earth seven times. Light travels very fast, right? We see light from the sun, but remember, it has taken a light year to come because it travels so fast and the sun is so far away from us. How fast? 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's how fast light travels. The other big idea is that light travels in straight lines, okay? The textbook goes over the quick example of, well, if you had a flashlight, you know your flashlight can't go around the corner if you're in the house looking around the corner because light does definitely travel in straight lines. Um, if I have a little tiny laser pointer like this, and if I have a beaker that's got some liquid in it, it's very hard to tell, but it does travel in a straight line. And I don't know if you've got any equipment at home where you could give this a try because you'll be able to see it a little bit better than what I can do. In the classroom, you know, if you've got some chalk dust, you can bang the brushes together and put the laser pointer through and you can have a sense of it. In the lab, generally the equipment we use is something called a ray box. And it looks like this, you simply plug it in, there's a light bulb at the end, and then I have um, a, a mask that kind of covers over the front of this and allows a particular beam of light to go through, whether it's one beam, two or three. I can even do um, five beams of light going through, and again, you'll see that they travel in straight lines. So this is a ray box, and we'll get to that in one of the next um, videos coming up. Okay. Light is an electromagnetic wave, has both electric and magnetic uh, parts to it. And we talk about the energy of a light wave with regards to how many uh, nanometers it has, okay? So the first blank here that I've got left is that blank blank are any electromagnetic waves that the human eye can detect. And you know what we call that? We call that visible light. So we can identify a particular wavelength that the human eye can detect, and then we understand that there are other wavelengths that you cannot see. You can't see an X-ray. You can't see a, um, a gamma ray. You can't see a microwave ray. However, you can see any wavelength that's within the visible spectrum. And the visible spectrum is simply the rainbow, the Roy G. Biv of colors that we get, okay? The amount of energy that we get in that visible spectrum ranges from, are you ready for this one? 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Okay? If you were to classify energy on this scale of radio waves, microwaves, infrared. Can you see where the visible light is on the scale here? Okay. We can classify these waves by different amounts of energy that they have. Okay. And this is what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. On this uh, scale, you can see here that we have low frequency 
on this end and high frequency on this end. And right in the middle is our visible spectrum right here. And this represents, it just sort of breaks it down here to this uh, little diagram here so you can see that you have something here that is 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. So this little port right here of that entire electromagnetic spectrum is the visible light and that's what we can see. All right, this is broken up into a rainbow of colors, isn't it? Okay, and if you have something that looks like a prism, okay, and you shine a light beam through the prism, it will do something to the light. Do you know what it does? Okay, well, let's have a quick look at this little video right here, and I've posted it online so we can see it as well. Down by the glass and only go back to their normal speed when they come out the other side. That slowing down is what causes white light to split into a rainbow of color whenever it hits glass on an angle. It happens because glass slows some colors of light more than others and because slowing down on an angle makes light bend. It's easy to understand the bending if you picture how the light waves would look from above, like how waves at the beach look if you see them from the air. And while white light's made up of all the different colors of light, it also helps to look at them one color at a time. When a wave front of red light hits glass on an angle, the part of the wave that enters the glass first gets slowed down before the rest, and that changes the angle of the whole wave, like how waves bend around a cliff. Violet light gets slowed down even more by glass, so its waves bend more. All the other colours get bent somewhere in between. So the colours get separated when they first enter the glass on an angle and they spread out even more when they speed up on an angle as they leave. The reason the different colours slow down different amounts in glass is because they've got different wavelengths. Red light has the longest wavelength followed by orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and finally violet with the shortest wavelength. And the okay, so we'll get back to that and you can see right here from this diagram, even though this one doesn't have color in it, that you've got your longest red, uh, the longest wavelength here, which was which color again? Red. And following the acronym Roy G. Biv with violet at the end with our 400 nanometers. Okay, the textbook section has a beautiful diagram here where you can see, oh, I thought it was here. There it is. You've got the visible spectrum right there. That's the diagram here that you can see where the white light gets separated into its colors. There's a gizmo attached with this lesson as well, and you can have a look at the prism again with the white light going through, but it's not much more detailed than that. Your focus will be to work through the lesson on um, the notes where we're looking at light, the visible spectrum, what happens if light goes through a prism, and then a few of the background information uh, pieces about light. Okay, pay careful attention to things in this lesson here where you could compare and contrast a couple of things. Okay, so what's the difference between visible light and a radio wave light? Or what's the speed of light um, in one particular substance versus another one? Because that's going to change as well and some of that math we'll get to a little bit later. The next thing I just want to mention is that in this unit you're going to want a couple of tools to help you out. If you have a straight edge ruler, any straight line ruler will be good because basically you need it to draw a straight line for white light. And then if you've got a protractor, in fact you could even use the straight edge here, you definitely need a protractor. So if you don't have one, I will get you one the very first time I see you in class. I'll give you one to keep. But if you find one in your um, office supplies somewhere at home, um, that'll be a handy tool. Okay, so good, light, good luck completing all the light notes, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.